Okay, this is unit three, lecture eight. Very last one for unit three. Uh, just wanna hit a last couple things toward the end of the civil rights movement here. Uh, first of all, first thing we wanna talk about is the Freedom Democratic Party. Uh, in the spring of 64, before the summer that we talked about in the last lecture, um, a group of Mississippi civil rights uh, leaders created the Freedom Democratic Party because um, it, was, they were, it was coming up on time to have the Democratic National Convention and to send our delegates. And they wanted to challenge the all-white Democratic Party um, that was selected to represent Mississippi. Um, they claimed that they were more, that, that this group of, this biracial group was more loyal to the Democratic Party um, than the, than the all-white delegation was. And if you think about it, um, the, uh, the Democrats had become the party of civil rights between John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson, who was up for uh, trying to get renominated himself. Um, Democrat, the Democratic Party was the party of, uh, of civil rights. And so it does make sense that a biracial group would be a better, rep, uh, be better members of the Democratic Party at this time. But Mississippi Democrats, who had been Democrats since the Civil War, um, didn't, weren't ready to kind of give that up. So, uh, President Johnson and the machinery seeing that this is going to be a problem, tries to work out a compromise. Um, they, <clears throat> they were willing to seat any white delegate that signed a pledge to support the nominee. There was a concern that these Mississippi delegates would not support Lyndon Johnson because of his civil rights record and would, would kind of try to pull this whole Dixiecrat thing again. And so they, they said, look, any of you guys that will come and sign a pledge that you're going to support the nominee, um, we'll, we'll seat you. They also offered two at-large seats to the Freedom Democratic Party. Um, yeah, so, so basically two black delegates from Mississippi, and the rest of them could be honored guests but wouldn't be voting delegates. Um, the compromise also had a, had a clause in it that said future de delegations from Mississippi would have to be biracial. Um, and as you can imagine, both sides said no. Um, you know, the white side said they weren't going to sign up to guarantee that they were biracial going forward. Uh, the, the, the Freedom Democratic Party side said we didn't come, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, who we're going to talk about in a second, said we didn't come all this way for two seats. And so it's a huge uproar. And so the, the, um, the, the deal is finally stuck that the 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 loyal the loyalists the the all white delegation will be seated in 64 the mississippi freedom democratic party will be seated in 68 during that nominating convention when they end up nominating hubert humphrey and then um and that's the plan now by 72 that's what they did by 72 um mississippi democrats have merged into a biracial group um, so, so that it didn't take as long as one might think. Um, but as we're going to talk about later in a later unit, um, this was around the time when the Republican party in Mississippi started to gain and make some strides, especially on the national level. And so <coughs> Democrats realized regardless of, of your racial issues, you're not going to be a viable party in this state much longer if they don't get together. So that's what ended up happening. Um, the most famous person uh, of this whole event is Fannie Lou Hamer. I'm sure you've heard her name. Um, she was the vice chairman of the Democrat uh, Mississippi Freedom Party. She was well known. She was on TV a lot. She was really their spokesman. Um, she was a daughter of sharecroppers. She was a granddaughter of slaves, and she becomes a a one of the later civil rights movement's most well-known figures, especially in the state of Mississippi. Um, in 1964, she, that same summer or year, she ran for Congress. Um, of course, she didn't win, but um, she became one of the more beloved Mississippi civil rights leaders um, during this time frame and, and continued throughout the rest of her life to be an advocate and be there and be an active member of the Democratic Party. She. Um, she, she, she got a lot of uh, honor and recognition finally toward the end of her life. <clears throat> All right, two pieces of legislation we need to talk about because it does affect Mississippi. Um, 
you'll get more of this in, in Mississippi studies, obviously, but we do need to hit on it. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, this law prohibited discrimination based on race, religion, national or origin, and gender in public facilities. So things like restaurants, hotels, theaters, parks, schools, libraries, um, and in employment. So basically, this is a law saying we you can't discriminate based on those things. Um, you know, you can't say whites only. You can't say, you know, we don't hire uh, people of color for this job. We, we, you can't say that's a man's job. Um, and so to enforce some of that, they created the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. It still exists. If you feel like you've been mistreated in, in employment practices based on your race or gender or whatever, you can still go to the EEOC. Um, but th this has been one of the more enduring laws of our time uh, in, in keeping Mississippi equal. Uh, the next year they passed the Voting Rights Act. Um, this was one <clears throat> aimed at getting uh, African Americans their, their rights in the, as the 15th Amendment, their voting rights. Um, this outlawed literacy tests, you know, basically proving you can read or write. It outlawed poll taxes. Um, it identified counties in the South known to keep African Americans from voting. And it sent federal registrars into these states to register these voters um, and, and to try to make sure that the, the state level they were doing things right. So these are two landmark pieces of legislation. They're, they're still important in our history today. Um, just kind of, as far as de jure segregation, actually legal on paper law segregation, these two laws pretty much put an end to all of that. Uh, <clears throat> another, another famous Mississippian <clears throat> and another one of these guys that got convicted way after it all happened, um, Vernon Dahmer was the president of the Forest County NAACP. Um, he was a avid supporter of voting rights. He had voter drives, things like that. Worked very hard, very closely with some of these groups registering voters. <coughs> and he was killed when members of the KKK firebombed his house. So it's not like they kept this a secret. Everybody knew who had done it. Um, so several of the Klansmen are indicted, including the Imperial Wizard, Sam Bowers. He was the, the, the head of that area's chapter of the KKK. And, uh, but every time they had a trial, it ended a mistrial, just like Byron D. LeBeck with, you never could get a conviction, but they never got an acquittal. Uh, they, they added up with mistrials. But again, new evidence surfaced in 98, um, Bowers, some people testified that he had um, bragged to him, those kind of things. And so in 1998, uh, he was found guilty, finally, and sentenced to life in prison. Um, and he died there in 2006. So this is like the third case that we've talked about during this little section of these people that committed murder. They got away with it for a long time, but, but eventually did end up having to go to jail for some of these civil rights killings. All right, <clears throat> that leads us to the election of 1967, which is one of the more historic elections. There's, there's going to be a couple more we talk about where things really change. But in 67, 22 African Americans were elected to various positions at the state and local level. Um, I know that doesn't sound like a lot statewide, but, but this is Mississippi in the 60s. Um, the most significant of those by far <clears throat> is Congressman Robert G. Clark of Ebenezer. Um, he's elected to the Mississippi legislature and he is going to serve there for almost 40 years. Um, he is a, he was a champion of public education. A lot of the things we do have in public schools, um, he, he was a huge part of. Um, he was chairman of the House Education Committee. He was Speaker Pro Temp, which is the second in charge. Uh, of this of the of the house in there in Jackson, um, and you know he he goes into office during this 1967 election, and he he is a a, a hugely important Mississippi politician. Uh, in 2004, he became the first 
African American to have a state building named after him. One of the buildings at Jackson is named after Robert G. Clark. Um, so definitely somebody worth knowing his name. And that kind of brings us to the end of this unit. Uh, the last person we want to talk about is John William, uh, John Bell Williams. Uh, he was elected during this 1967 election. Um, and, and look, he, he was an open supporter of states' rights. He, he was an open supporter of segregation. Um, but despite that, much of Mississippi's integration happens during his time. He, he uh, they established, they abolished the dual education system, <clears throat> which had black schools and white schools. Um, they fully integrated during this time, during his four years. Um, and while he objected to it, he didn't try to stop it. He didn't do like governors in the past had done and try to block it. Um, and so what we see as we kind of wind this, this, this down is between the integration of schools, which was the last kind of big holdout of segregationists, and the election of Bill Waller as governor, who was the prosecutor of Byron D. LeBeck with that we just talked about, uh, or who we talked about during Medgar Evers uh, section, um, he gets elected governor in 1671. And so what that tends to signal is kind of the end of the old Mississippi, the end of the segregationism, the end of the uh, some of the things that, that have given Mississippi such a bad reputation, rightfully so. Um, and so what we're gonna see in the next unit is we come to modern Mississippi is a lot of the people that have kind of made a difference along the way of getting Mississippi from that old South um, racist, redneck, segregationist uh, state to the state we have today, which while it has its problems, is much more inclusive.